I'm Raina Morgan with Eye Health Tube, and we're visiting today with Dr. Ellie Rappaport. We've been talking earlier about your background. How many years have you been studying mm -hmm. ATP? A long, long time. A long, long time. And uh, <laughs> I got my PhD in 1971, and at that time I moved to Boston and to the Massachusetts General Hospital. And I became interested in uh, ATP and cancer, its role in cellular proliferation. And uh, it has been 40 years. 40 years. Since I started my PhD, which was also related to ATP, yes. till we have arrived today. And today, uh, although here I am uh, representing TSI Health Sciences um, and explaining about the oral supplement that goes by the name of by the brand name of Peak ATP. That's the oral is, supplement. Yes, which is the actual molecule, the ATP disodium. Uh, I also my other interest now is uh, involved in uh, a company called ATP Therapeutics that um, develops uh, therapeutic indications for ATP, mostly for uh, terminal uh, diseases for which there is no cure. Okay. Would you tell our viewers exactly what ATP is, in a nutshell? Yes. ATP is a molecule that's comprised of three distinct, three distinct se uh, moieties. There is the adenine, the adenine, be the adenine part, then the sugar, the ribose, and they are both connected, and then the sugar is connected to three phosphate groups. That's why it's called adenosine. Adenosine is the adenine and the sugar triphosphate. Now, the energy of ATP is in the second to third phosphate bond. When this bond is hydrolyzed, energy is released. Now the energy is what we're talking about because right. it's the energy in the body, the energy currency it of the is, body, it the is. universal energy It source. is, but as you will see, when we are talking about um, peak ATP, it does not directly replace the ATP that is lost. It, okay. it, it improves the cellular energetics by a roundabout way by stimulating blood flow, by stimulating the uptake of sugar, by stimulating oxygen disposal, by removal waste products such as lactic acid and ammonia and so forth. So I didn't Now, I would like to mention one more thing, if you let me, Rena. Certainly. Uh, when we are talking about ATP as a nutritional supplement, we are also talking about adenosine, because adenosine is the the dephosphorylation product of ATP in vivo. And adenosine has as important a role as ATP. Just to give you an example, it is now well established that adenosine is the major signal for sleep. It determines the onset of sleep, the duration of sleep, and the quality of sleep. But this is in the central nervous system, in the brain. And the, yes, and the ATP that we are giving as a nutritional supplement mm -hmm. in the short term does not cross the blood-brain barrier. But adenosine is a major player as much as ATP is. And it signals the body when to go to sleep. Right, the same way that ATP signals a lot of other in other words, what happens here is that evolution has utilized this ancient molecule for modern signals. To give you two other examples, taste buds. When you taste, there are a lot of taste receptors. Now, the, ta the difference is in the taste receptors, not in the way they convey the taste to the brain. The way the taste receptor, there are taste receptors for salt, for sugar, for uh, pepper, for vinegar, and so forth, and combinations thereof. Now, the way they convey the 
signal to the brain is through a mechanism that's called the afferent mechanism. In other words, the, the taste receptors release a molecule that interacts with the receptor, with the protein molecule okay. that can sense it. And then the protein molecule sitting on a nerve ending sends the signal to the brain. Now, the molecule is in all cases ATP. It's ATP. Okay. Now, another example, if blood oxygen goes too low, the body needs to have a signal for involuntary breathing. And the, the signal, again, is ATP. In this way, secreted by the carotid artery, by the carotid body that sits behind the carotid artery. When the carotid body senses that the oxygen level in the blood are too low, the glomus cells in the carotid body send, release ATP, and again, by this afferent mechanism, whereby they interact with ATP receptors, the signal is sent to the brain. And then involuntary breathing is initiated.